Welcome to the Arizona Art Alliance featuring SpotlightArizona.tv. My name is Diana Rodriguez and today I am here with John Fontana. Welcome John. Good morning Diana. Thank you. John, most people think that art is only for those who um, are skilled at drawing or painting or have an extraordinarily creative mind. But you have taken art to another level, the concept of that. You've taken it to another level. Um, you founded an outreach program. Can you tell us about that? I'd be happy to. The, uh, uh, the veterans program, it very simply stated, is a fine art program for veterans, particularly those that are afflicted with PTSD and TB, uh, TBI, and um, unfortunately called the invisible wounds of war, uh, which makes it for a very delicate and complicated situation. But we know from our own past experience that art is very therapeutic and it has healing qualities. And we have this through experience of our other outreach programs. And so it was a natural to apply that to, to our veterans. How are you able to address the issues of PTSD and TBI? Well, when we came up with the concept of doing this, we had to assess our assets that we had. And, and we felt very comfortable with our past experience. And um, frankly, going back, let me take you back a little further. So we have a long history of reaching out to the community and uh, supporting outreach programs. We have been involved with um, uh, helping handicapped children, disadvantaged mm -hmm. children, uh, including incarcerated boys ages 12 to 18 and just had some marvelous results uh, for a project that I personally thought was going to be very challenging. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, it was probably one of the more rewarding uh, outreach programs that we have. We also um, mentor uh, seniors with Alzheimer's and having great success. Again, the, the power of art is, is showing itself over and over, and that's why we felt so confident about addressing our veterans with PTSD and TBI. Mm. How did you start the <clears throat> Veteran Outreach Program? Well, that was um, an abrupt start because we were stunned. I personally was stunned to find out the type of statistics that were applied to our veterans committing suicide. I, 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 it was just unheard of. I, I had no idea. And then <clears throat> when uh, re reports in surfaced that 22 veterans per day, 22 per day are committing suicide, men and women. When you can, if you do the math, that's 8,000 a year. Now the other alarming part of that is that's only a third that succeeded. That means that two thirds have either contemplated or attempted suicide. So. If indeed we're talking about 8,000 a year that complete the task, that means that 16,000 mm -hmm. have had that cross their mind. Think about yeah. the ramification here is just huge. When you consider um, husbands, wives, uh, children, parents, uncles, aunts, neighbors, friends, it's like the proverbial pebble in a pond that that small pebble goes in and the ripples continue to go out on and on. And mind you, these statistics are per year. Mm -hmm. This has been going on a long time. In fact, the, what was it, the Washington Post in, in January of 2013 uh, commented that we have lost more veterans to suicide than were killed in combat. Uh, that is just unacceptable. Yeah, so that was a turning point for us to do something. And that's a commitment that we made three, three years ago, three and a half years ago. Okay, well, that's very unfortunate. Very. It, very it, unfortunate. It's, what is so unfortunate is that it's been going on for so long mm -hmm. and very little has been done to mm -hmm. prevent it or to help it. And we have so, so many stories that came out of our art programs the, of um, the, the no, neglect, the um, just forgotten souls when they come home and uh, we're trying to do our part. Mm -hmm. How did you organize the outreach program? Well, we, we had an assessment of our assets and, and that was we had talent, uh, we had um, educated um, uh, artists, we have uh, professional artists, 
We even have a, a professor of art. Uh, <clears throat> we have plenty of volunteers and we had locations. So mm -hmm. this was a little different from our other outreach programs because it had some very serious consequences. And <clears throat> so we did a little research and we came up with the, uh, uh, an outfit uh, or an organization called the um, American Art Therapy Association, which was very helpful. And doing the, um, uh, the, the review and, and uh, research, let me read here in part um, uh, what they had commented on. And this was in August of 2009. They stated, and I quote, art therapy helps veterans in a variety of ways by encouraging expression of feelings and concerns. Art, makes, art making has been observed to relieve depression and anxiety as well as improve orientation to reality. Many have increased levels of self-confidence, self-esteem through engaging the creative arts. Uh, very powerful and, and uh, supportive. But to confirm our belief, we went to um, the Phoenix VA Hospital and contacted the, um, uh, the, the it's called Recreational Therapy, um, which is kind of a misnomer, I think. But nonetheless, uh, we presented our idea of wanting to um, educate um, veterans in, the, in fine art and uh, particularly veterans that were afflict afflicted with PTSD and TBI. Mm -hmm. uh, we were very pleasantly surprised that we were welcomed, uh, we were encouraged, um, the therapist gave us some suggestions and um, some recommendations and gave us 15 veterans that were interested in starting the program. Oh, so nice. that was our beginning. Oh, that's awesome. Do you have any examples of, of any artists oh, yeah, in the program? Yeah, we do have many. Uh, you know, it, it was caught, we didn't know. We were artists, and, and we didn't know trigger points and things like that. So that, that was our concern in, in conversing with the, uh, the therapist at the VA hospital. And so the first few classes were pretty cautious, and we were getting to know one another. Mm -hmm. And um, there are little quirks. And, and when you consider that, for us, we take for granted to go into a room with other people. This is a big step for most of these right. folks. So it started um, with basic drawing and uh, relaxing and, and getting comfortable with one another. And uh, we made sure that we had plenty of assistance to help to give personal uh, uh, guidance and attention to uh, the veterans, which seemed to have quite a calming effect on them. And, and so that was a a stepping stone and, and I'll, I'll admit it was a learning process for us as well and um, from that point forward it just got better and better in fact to the point this is interesting the as the classes went on the relationship between veteran and assistant or teacher grew and grew to the point where part of our program was to provide some refreshments water coffee tea soft drinks, maybe cookies, light mm -hmm. stuff. Well, this bond developed, the gals were bringing food from home. Would you believe pulled pork sandwiches, pizzas? Wow. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, <Even hungry>. yum. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting and very powerful. Well, it, it, the, the, the interesting part here is that the, the, uh, the bond that was developing, which also fills a void apparently that our veterans coming home just had missed because during combat, during the military, there is a strong bond because the, the term I have your back and such. Mm -hmm. And then you come to a, a, a much more casual environment. It's, it's a big adjustment for them. Right. You and I had a conversation before and you were mentioning about um, a biker friend of yours who was a veteran. <laughs> oh, well, uh, it developed into a friendship. Yeah, you're right. Thank you for bringing that up. Bud, call him Bud G. Um, I met Bud the first time at the very first class that was held at uh, one of our locations. And <clears throat> I typically like to go out and introduce the, uh, myself and the program to uh, the veterans and kind of put them at ease and, as mm -hmm. to what's involved. And, um, uh, <clears throat> but there was one fellow that, that stuck out, <clears throat> excuse me, and that was Bud. Here's a guy that's over six foot tall big leather jacket, leather vest with all sorts of patches and a red bandana and sunglasses on his forehead. Very formidable character. Mm -hmm. 
But there was something about Bud that just struck me as being interesting, if not challenging. And so as a plant, after we got our, I had made a little talk, I uh, eased on over gently. Bud was sitting with his back to the wall. That's a notable feature for a lot of these veterans. And so after an introduction, some small talk, uh, Bud started to open up and uh, Bud is a 15 year combat veteran mm. that one, once discharged, he came home to a complete disillusionment uh, as far as the outside civilian world was concerned. Mm -hmm. Bud had lost his home, his marriage, his family. He was just destitute, uh, alone, um, depressed, deep depression. Uh, Bud later on, after uh, many uh, meetings and so on, and we got to know each other better, better he uh, had mentioned that yeah, suicide did cross his mind. Again, just horrible. Mm -hmm. For 15 months, Bud never left the apartment, most of the time on the sofa. And <clears throat> little by little, I mean, think about how tragic that is. Mm -hmm. it, little by little, he started to loosen up and he picked up the harmonica. And he started playing and he realized that his music was interpreted through colors. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that to uh, his girlfriend at the time, and that gave her an idea. And so she presented him with a starter art kit for as a Christmas gift. Oh. Well, uh, Bud didn't quite charge into that right away. He wasn't <laughs> quite sure about that. So after about a month, they decided to crack open the, um, uh, the kit, and he thought, maybe this is something I can try, maybe to put on paper my music, mm -hmm. the colors of my music. And that started Bud's journey. He has since, um, he was surprised by the outcome and also mentioned that uh, it had a calming effect and uh, it helped to uh, suppress a lot of the anxiety and the depression. And uh, particularly when he's alone and those uh, ugly things start to surface, he calls it the beast. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bud has um, uh, created some posters uh, speaking from the heart and when he was really troubled and uh, they are so compelling. In fact, one had won a prize and it's, uh, of, uh, it's a regional veterans art contest. I, I and think this is all through the program? Yes, it was oh, stimulated awesome. through the, uh, the, the program, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is on tour. And um, in fact, uh, I've asked Bud for his permission to, to reproduce some of these um, paintings of his because they are so compelling. Mm -hmm. And it, and it really gives you an idea what goes through the minds of our veterans with PTSD. Well, but thank it, you for asking that question. Yeah, Bud is no, a special guy. That's great. It sounds like he was impacted greatly through this program, and I'm sure there's a lot of other veterans who, who have benefited. Do you have um, any other any quotes or anything from any other veterans? Oh, I'm glad you asked. And, and the reason this art program is so important, typically a lot of these programs that are put on, well, I'll say the government, um, are busy hands. Um, just keeping them busy and um, they're not really learning too many things. And, and so repetition is not um, conducive to what they need. And learning art, because it's a building process, it's an uh, ongoing process, 
and uh, you can tell that it's become very, very important to them. Well, thank you very much for sharing with us today. I really enjoyed it all. Well, I, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to tell the world about the situation with our veterans, and, and uh, we're very proud of what we've accomplished in our program, but God, there's just so much more to be done. And I'm hoping to reach out to the, uh, the public through this video uh, to have them become aware of the importance and the disastrous consequences that we have with our veterans. So uh, with that, I thank you. God bless America and our veterans. To donate, visit our website at www.azartalliance.com. Look for the big red PayPal button and click on that. Fill out the easy form and indicate if you want to receipt or not. Or you can mail your donation to Arizona Art Alliance Veteran Program, 10810 North Tatum Boulevard, Suite 102-264, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028. Thank you.